So in 2022, we're going to Miami, back to the Alligator State of Florida for the first time in Formula One since 1959 when we raced at Sebring. The Hard Rock Stadium, home of the Miami Dolphins NFL team, will be the centerpiece of this street circuit, built in and around the car parks outside the stadium, basically. I personally think a second US race is a no-brainer. Look, I know there's parts of the world where there aren't races where there should be, but the US is big enough and the potential audience is big enough for me to justify two races there for sure. Thing is though, when this was announced, when we saw pictures of the track layout, and then when we saw on board a set of course and mod of what the race might actually look from a driver's point of view, a lot of people weren't happy. So is this just F1 fans having a moan as we often do? Or are there some fundamental problems that maybe I can try and remedy by doing a bit of a redesign? Because that's what I do. So to start, what are people's qualms exactly? Because when you look at the video that shows the onboard around Miami on the official F1 YouTube channel, there's a pretty clear pattern. Big walls, narrow track, long straights, zero elevation change. Miami contains all four of these things. And these four things typically aren't good things. Now, long straights in isolation aren't necessarily a bad thing, but that's more to do, I think, with the environment around the track, right? Like when you watch some of the onboard that F1 have released on this, to me, the problem, just generally speaking, is that it just feels lifeless. There's just massive walls and guard railings everywhere. From the driver point of view, there's nothing particularly interesting. Now, obviously, we as spectators won't be restricted to just the driver's point of view. On the track, we'll get aerials and shots all about, but this is all we've got to go on at the moment. At least with Abu Dhabi, for example, a track that gets a lot of stick, at least there are some interesting things. There's some mad architecture that the cars drive through and you're under the lights and all that comes together. So it definitely adds, whereas as far as what we've seen so far from Miami, it looks pretty stale. But I've got to say, this is a big caveat. All we're seeing, again, is a mod that's been made for a Sato Corsa and posted on the F1 YouTube channel. Like, are they going to be spending time making the environment look impact and interesting? Probably not. If the real track is exactly how it is in that game, then it will be a bit underwhelming. But I don't think it will be because you Americans are very, very good at putting on a show. A few palm trees dangling in, all that kind of stuff. Maybe an alligator chuck that in every other lap. Be fun. There's been a lizard on a track before, hasn't there? So why not? Regardless of how good or bad this track ends up being, I would love to go to Miami for this race. Only problem is I'm four and a half thousand miles away in London. But thanks to today's video sponsor, at least digitally, I don't have to be. Thank you Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Now I've been thinking about getting a VPN for a very long time, then Surfshark reached out and I had to take the plunge. Surfshark is an app and browser extension that can digitally put you pretty much anywhere you want in the world, including Miami. Why would you want to do that? Well, region locking is a thing. Do you want to watch Rush relive Lauda and Hunt's iconic rivalry right now on Netflix? Well, you can't on British Netflix, unfortunately, but it is on American Netflix. So just use Surfshark to fake it. Surfshark keeps no logs of your information. Everything goes through its encrypted servers, nice and safe. And you only need one account to sign into as many different devices as you like. I've obviously got mine signed in on my laptop and on my phone, which uh, it was always going to happen eventually. Glass back screen with no case. It was always going to crack in the end. Go and use my promo code TOMO at checkout for 83% off an annual subscription with Surfshark, plus an extra three months on top of that for free. And of course, there is a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you don't like it, you can get your money back. There's nothing to lose, no risk. You might as well give it a go. All links are down in the description below. Now for the narrow track. Now, when I look at it, I get what people mean. There are certain sections. There's that turn kind of 14, 15, 16 section at the end, which feels very narrow. And that's generally not a good thing because generally it means there's no overtaking. Yes, there are some examples. You know, the castle section at Baku is cool. It's very narrow, but it's cool because it's a novelty that it's a castle and it's got a bit of elevation change. It's got some character about it. We can tolerate that. We're quite happy with that. It's a challenge for the drivers first and foremost. Now, what's important to bear in mind is again, Miami's not coming in until the regulation 
change. So the cars are going to be, well, they're not going to be as long as they are currently. I'm pretty sure they're about the same width, but I, pre I think they're going to be a bit shorter. I hope so anyway, because the cars are too big as they are. Looking at the footage, I know it feels like the track's narrow, but I think that is a bit of an illusion because of the walls. Because when you've got a solid, like, there's no track limits messing about here. Like, if you go past, you're going to hit a wall. You compare that to a big open track like the Red Bull Ring, for example, where the walls are miles away from the actual track limits. It feels huge. It feels massive. You've got these big, you know, prison walls like right there on the side of the track. It's going to make things feel narrower, even if they aren't necessarily narrower. A great example of what is technically a street circuit, but doesn't feel like it is Canada, Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. For me, like it's got the walls, it's got the, you know, no room for error parts there, but also it does open up in sections. When you go into that first corner, it's a big open area. Like you've got the grass, you've got a bit of runoff. Bringing those two things together where possible, I think just, again, gives the circuit a bit more character. It's nice that it's going through a park essentially. So it's got the, the foliage and all of that. And they're not things that you might think like, oh, I don't care about that stuff. But I think we all do. It's subconscious, I think. But when a track just looks like this concrete jungle, like even a place like Baku, which doesn't really have these big runoffs and does have these 90 degree corners. But then it's got the castle and it's got the ridiculously long and ridiculously wide track. It's got there's some character there. And I just think from what we've seen so far of Miami, we're not seeing that. And finally, obviously, regarding elevation change. There's not much they can really do about it because they're building around a stadium and car parks, which are notoriously very flat. It is a shame, though, because elevation change generally correlates with a track being good. Three of the tracks on the current calendar with the most elevation change are Spa, Red Bull Ring, Interlagos. There's a few other up there, but there are three I'm picking out. And three of the least, you've got Sochi, Albert Park, Mexico. I know which three I prefer. Actually, when I put the call out on Twitter and my YouTube community for your thoughts on Miami, the circuit, does it need a redesign? What do you think? The most upvoted comment on YouTube from 7W25V summed up the sentiment perfectly, I think. It's just the walls and fences and all these tracks that drive me nuts. They look like prison courtyards compared to Imola, Spa, Suzuka, even Monaco. They have interesting scenery surrounding it. And that's the point, Miami. I think the track's fine as it is. I think their layout's all right. It's just put some cool there. Just make it interesting, please. But anyway, onto the redesign. So as I say, I put the call out on Twitter and YouTube community looking for your thoughts. And on Twitter, because you can attach images, obviously, some of you knocked up your own little Photoshop quick versions um, of what you thought the track should look like. So before we look at mine, we're gonna go through yours because you put your money where your mouth is. So fair play. What I've done is taken the five that were sent over, I've put them into my little template and then we'll do mine at the end and then we can judge all six and see whose is the best. So number one, we've got at ADNYT. They've in their own words, simplified a lot of corners to make it flow better. Create an overtaking zone out of turn four, five and calm down the right hand side section. Pretty solid attempt, mate. I like this one. At number two, we've got at GT underscore Alex 74, who's done a bit of a mad one. Alex Powell, this is a whole new bloody circuit, but I rate the fact that you've seen these boundaries and been like, nah, let's just, just, do, just do my own thing. Fair play to you, mate. You've reversed the direction. You've put some like hair clip on the left-hand side. I'm not sure what to think of it as a racing track, to be honest, but again, I respect the grind, mate. Good job. Number three, we've got old Johnny Warren. If you don't know the John Warren YouTube channel, give it a check out. I'll put a link above somewhere. Kept it simple here, mate. Cut off turn six and seven and put this kind of spike on the main straight. Kind of looks like someone was drawing a straight line and just sneezed. I'm not sure what I think of that exactly, although I do agree that that super long straight could do with a little bit of a breakup. So fair play, man. Number four, we've got at Tyler Kubushek underscore. I like that you focused on adding hard braking zones here. That would help overtake him big time in the current format. I do kind of miss the flowing sections of four to seven. Like I think a mixture of types of corners, not every corner has to be an overtaking opportunity. Some corners can just be like mad scary and mad like on the edge for drivers like the S's at Suzuka, for example. And last but by no means least, number five is from 
Tofu Lamao LMAO, whatever. Again, order of the day is tightening up these corners to create overtaking opportunities. I particularly like what you've done up in the top right hand side, corners 14 to 16. I prefer what you've suggested here. So good job, mate. Five very solid attempts, but this is mine. I'm already happy with how much of a breaking zone we've got into turn one. I definitely think people could sling that up the inside for sure. I haven't touched that and I've kept that flow in section because again, I like some medium speed corners. Again, with the new regulations, it shouldn't be as much of a problem having medium speed corners. First change is turning seven and eight into more of a sharp breaking zone again to try and encourage overtaking. I can't really see in its current form how someone, even if they can follow really closely, is going to be able to get around there. And like most others, I've opened up the turn kind of 13 to 15 area just to make it a bit more flowing and to turn turn 16 into more of an overtaking zone as well. And finally, I've stuck a little kink down the long ass straight. Again, I'm thinking driver challenge, you know, you want to carry as much speed through there as possible, but the walls are going to be like right there for this bit. How fast do you dare go through, especially if someone's right up your chuff? Because if you lose speed there, you've lost it all the way down the rest of this straight. So that's my take on the circuit itself. Let me know in the comments below who's won, who has the best redesign here. And again, what are your thoughts of Miami? I just hope they take a leaf out of Canada's book. Look at what Canada does well and how they integrate the stands and nature and just stuff, just character. It doesn't have to be nature because it's in the middle of a car park. I'm not expecting, you know, trees. I don't want, it doesn't need to feel like a maximum security prison, which is kind of what it feels like from that on board at the moment. But again, it's just a game mod. So I'm sure there's going to be more to it than what we can see currently. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, that's a wrap. My name's Tomo. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate you all taking the time. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn the notification bell on so you don't miss any of my new stuff. Thanks again. Have a good one. Ta-da.